Hello everyone, this video is going to cover some of the activities from Lab 1, which we'll go over in more detail during class. So, the last lecture I may have referred to the heart as being medial to the lungs and superior to the liver. I might also say that the lungs are lateral to the heart and the liver is inferior to the heart. These kind of terms are called directional terms. So, at the end of all this, when I ask you, where are your eyebrows, instead of saying the eyebrows are on the side of the face to the right and left of the nose and higher than the nose, you would say the eyebrows are lateral and superior to the nose. So these are all terms that we use to describe the relative position between parts of the body. And you're going to notice that these terms come in pairs, medial, lateral, superior, inferior, proximal, distal, anterior, posterior, superficial, deep. So to start with, there's the midline of your body, dividing the body into left and right. So your nose, your sternum, your belly button are roughly located on the midline of the head and trunk. Moving away from the midline toward the sides of the body is referred to as moving laterally. So your ears are lateral to your eyes, which are lateral to your nose. These terms can also be used on your limbs. For instance, your thumb is lateral to your pinky. More on the limbs in a minute. The second pair of terms refer to parts that are above or below each other, superior and inferior. So your nose is superior to your mouth, which is superior to your chin, which is superior to your neck. The next pair of terms are proximal, distal, and for now we're going to confine those terms to the arms and legs. Proximal, in this case, is closer to the point of attachment of a limb to the body trunk. As you move away from the trunk, you'll become more distal. So your fingertips are distal, to your elbow, which is distal to your shoulder. So proximal, distal, superior, inferior, medial, lateral, the three very common terms. And there's a few others I'm going to discuss, but you're going to often combine these terms to describe the relative position of an organ, such as the stomach, which is inferior and lateral to the heart or the thumb, which is lateral and proximal to the pinky. But what if, say, you moved your arm, placed your hand over your heart, would your thumb still be lateral to your pinky? Yes. With these directional terms, it is critical to remember that they always refer to the subject in what is called anatomical position. This is basically standing up straight. And the only somewhat unnatural thing to remember about this position is that your palms are facing forward. This is very important to keep in mind as we get on to identifying bones, muscles, blood vessels, and nerves of the forearm. So another important pair term I have already briefly alluded to divides the body into front and back, which you will now refer to as anterior posterior, also known as ventral and dorsal. These terms, anterior, ventral, posterior, dorsal, are used pretty much completely interchangeably and somewhat randomly, and they're called one versus the other, mostly based on tradition. So earlier I mentioned the brain and spinal cord are located within the so-called dorsal cavity. And you can remember the word dorsal by thinking of a dorsal fin of a shark. And we also talked about the ventral body cavity, which is towards the front of your body. And the last pair I'm going to mention here is superficial and deep which comes up quite often in terms of layers and muscles and blood vessels. The most superficial region of your body is the skin. And as you go deeper, you're going to pass through successive layers of connective tissue, muscle, and then possibly bone 
and then the organs within those body cavities. So that's superficial and deep. And the next subject concerning terminologies concerns sectional views. This figure shows a person cut down the midline, dividing her into left and right to view the internal organization of the body. The term anatomy literally means cutting up because this is the traditional way of understanding the internal organization of body parts. Some of these two-dimensional views take some getting used to until you are a little more familiar with the internal structures. But over time, you can start to put different views together to get a better understanding of the body's organization. So we're going to divide the body conceptually into different body planes for specific purposes, dividing the body into anterior posterior in the frontal plane, left and right for the sagittal plane, and superior inferior for the horizontal plane. And we're going to go over the details of this during the class lab. So the last subject for this video I want to briefly introduce is the notion of body regions. I had mentioned earlier about the axial and the appendicular regions as to the broadest categories of the body regions. But you'll also notice here within these regions are subregions marked by those white lines or colored areas. Every one of those enclosed areas have specific names that you'll become familiar with, if not now, then by the end of this course. This is because many of the bones, muscles, nerves, blood vessels are going to have names that correspond to these regions. Some of these are going to be somewhat familiar to you at least, such as the nasal and oral regions, whereas others like the mental and axillary regions might be completely foreign to you. So you may want to go through this term list, check off the ones that are possibly familiar with you, or you can guess. For example, you may be familiar with carpal tunnel syndrome, and then associate carpal region with the wrist. Many of the others you're going to pick up as we learn the names of bones, muscles, blood vessels, etc., etc. So this is what we mean when we say anatomy is like trying to drink water from a fire hose. Along with the concepts you are trying to learn, the structures you are trying to identify, you're also learning another language unless you happen to be already familiar with Greek and Latin. All right, so that's it for this time. We'll see you next time.